Good morning, everyone, St. Barnabas family and all who are joining us uh, today. Good to be with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our service begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy, Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We will now have our readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Masters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus shall you say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations, the word of the Lord. 
A reading from Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful, and he made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen, that they might help keep his statutes and observe the laws. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what he has done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Well, good morning again. Um, I'm going to bypass that strong gospel this morning to uh, focus on these words from Romans, from Paul's letter to the book of Romans. And I'm going to read some some quotes from that um, from that passage to you to start the sermon hold fast to that which is good extend hospitality to strangers bless those who persecute you 
Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Live peaceably with all. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. These words from Paul are beautiful. <laughs> um, but they don't just sound beautiful. They describe a beautiful, grace-filled life. And they invoke in me a longing to live into these words. I want to be able to live and let live like that. I want to love like that. I want to forgive like that. These words describe how I would like to respond to my life. But oftentimes, instead of responding to life and circumstance, we end up reacting to things. Reacting, that's when often out of anger or fear, one doesn't think about what one's about to do and reacts. And the results are usually anything but beautiful. There is a story uh, that was reported in the, the news a couple of years ago um, that is a sort of living parable that I love. I love this story that speaks to this idea of responding instead of reacting. It, it, it revolves around two residents of Fort Smith, Arkansas. One was a 50-something man named Hisham Yassin. Hisham Yassin, he'd grown up in Syria, but as a teenager, he was able to immigrate to the United States, joining his parents and older brother. Hisham had imagined Beverly Hills, don't we all? But found himself instead in Western Arkansas, and not in a mansion, but in a rotting house with rats and cockroaches. Hisham's first job was washing dis dishes at the Golden Corral. His father collected aluminum cans. Everybody in uh, the family worked hard. And eventually, Hisham and his brother opened a used car lot. Today, Hisham lives in one of the grander houses in Fort Smith. His business thrived. Hisham's is one of those great American stories. If you ask Hisham his birthday, the date he'll give you does not correspond to the date of his birth, for he considers the day he came to the United States his birthday. Hisham is involved in many civic and cultural activities in Fort Smith. He is seen as a community leader not surprisingly, he was one of the founders of the town's mosque. It's called Al-Salam, which means peace in Arabic. Now in our parable, there is another character, a young man named Abraham Davis, a person whose society would say had not amounted to much. Abraham was raised poor by a single mom, his family making do on a disability check and donations from the food bank. Abraham did poorly in school and dropped out before graduating. Expectations were low for Abraham and he bent to fit them. So one night, Abraham and some friends were drinking, smoking pot, and talk turned to ISIS and a recent attack that had killed American soldiers. The guys were angry. And out of that outrage came an impulse Let's do something, they said. Let's retaliate. So Abraham and his two friends piled into his mom's minivan, can't make this up, uh, and drove to the mosque. The next morning, after receiving a call, Hisham drove to the mosque. He saw the first of many swastikas spray painted over their curbside sign. As he got closer to the building, he saw go home scrawled on the front door. 
And on one of the front windows among the profanities about Islam, there was a phrase Hisham did not recognize, Du's vault. It's Latin for it is God's will, which was a medieval rallying cry during the Crusades that has been co-opted by white supremacists. Hisham's heart hurt. He thought about how little the Vandals understood. He was filled with all kinds of emotions, anger, sadness, fear. But that morning, Hisham didn't react. He responded by springing into action. He called the police, he called the mosque's board members, he called the newspaper. By afternoon, the story was breaking. Then something wonderful happened. The mosque phone started ringing and did not stop ringing. Churches called, a synagogue called, the Buddhists called. Over the next week, people brought flowers and food. The mosque was snowed under with cards and letters, and Hisham kept all of them in a drawer in his office as if they were jewels. Meanwhile, Abraham did not know the mosque's address, so he mailed his letter to his brother asking him to deliver it. Dear Al Salam Mosque, Abraham wrote, you probably hate me, but I want you to hear that I am so sorry that I was wrong. You didn't deserve it. And Abraham signed his full name. It was shocking. The leaders of the mosques of the mosque were moved by the sincerity of the letter. A meeting of the mosque board was held and Hisham led that meeting. And it just so happened that the sermon they'd heard that week spoke of their duty as Muslims to forgive. And it didn't take long for them to do it. Hisham's response was loving and even handed. If one of my kids did something stupid, I would want them to be forgiven. Right away, he met with the prosecutor's office, making clear that the mosque did not want to press charges. He especially pleaded for mercy for Abraham Davis. In the days after the crime, Abraham felt embarrassed. I look in the mirror and think, who are you? Abraham said. Abraham po posted a note on Facebook I just want to thank everyone who's been supporting me at the mosque. I pray blessings over them. The next day he saw a response from Hisham's son. And this is, this is my favorite part. Hisham's son says, bro, move on with your life. I speak for the whole Muslim community of Fort Smith. We love you. We want the best for you. Abraham would say of that comment that it was the nicest thing anyone had ever said to him. This story ended well, so well that Hisham and Abraham said that what had happened was nothing but a blessing. It's a good story and the reason it's a good story is because someone, instead of reacting, they responded. They responded in a beautiful way. How do we do that? How do we respond instead of react? How do, do we how do we do all those awesome, awesome things Paul talked about? You know, the loving and the forgiving and the blessing. In answer to that question, this how-to question. I want to draw on something someone taught me a long time ago that's helped me over the years when I remember to practice it. And sometimes it's easier for me when I'm trying to learn something to have a physical, physical component to that learning rather than have it be just conceptual. This thing I'm going to show you is like a little dance. And I realize I'm gonna embarrass myself here. Okay, so this big dance move uh, that I have for you, it's really not much of a, a move at all. Uh, basically, 
the move goes like this. And then you step forward. Let me explain. Um, you know, imagine or just remember some time in your life where someone or something was right in front of you, was driving you crazy, was upsetting you. Um, they're right in front of you. And what do you, and, and imagine, imagine Hisham, the, all the swastikas at, at the mosque. What do we want to do when something's right in front of us? We want to go get it. We want to react to it. We want to make it pay. We want to, we want to do what we have to do. And when we do that, we might, we might get the person, but it's usually not uh, something we're proud of. Um, and that's, that's what reacting is all about, is reacting like this, but there's a different way. And here comes the dance move. Instead of having this thing right in front of you, step to the side. Step to a place where you can, in calm and in confidence, you can make a decision to formulate a way about how you want to move forward, how you want to respond to the thing rather than react to the thing. Um, and, and you know, in our story, Hisham responded beautifully. He didn't react, he could have reacted. He was within his rights to react, but he didn't, he responded. And you know what, we can all do this. We can all live like Paul talks about in his letter, you know, that we heard here. Listen to these things. We can, we can live this life. We can extend hospitality to strangers. We can bless those who persecute us. We can rejoice with those who rejoice. And we can weep with those who weep. We cannot repay anyone evil for evil, but live peaceably with all. We cannot be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So may we, may we strive to respond to our life, to respond to our life with love and grace. Amen. Let us affirm our faith, saying the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people, in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this Fredericksburg community, the nation, 
in the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all our bishops, especially Gary, our uh, diocesan bishop. Um, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in God's church for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We thank you, Lord, for the beginning of school, um, Pour out your abundance upon the teachers and students um, who begin this year in precarious circumstances. Um, be with them, bless them, and fill them with your grace. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We wrap all of our prayers, all of our hopes, all of our fears. We wrap them in the multitude of your mercy and we trust in your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now confess our sins against God, and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us now go into the world in peace. And Lord, there's so much pain, so much strife in the world. Help us to be kind, kind to ourselves, kind to each other, kind to everyone. For all of us are involved in our own great struggles. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.